it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he makes the sun to to rise on the evil and on the good. He sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if we love them which love you, if you love them that love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans or the sinners do the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than they? Do not even the publicans do so. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven, it's his, which is perfect. Heavenly Father, I pray that this message will transform lives and that there be repentance for those who are holding a grudge against someone, those who are living in a spirit of unforgiveness. And let us see and understand the power of forgiveness, how it transforms our lives and how it opens the windows of heaven. Lord, I pray that many, many will make things right in hearing the word of God today. So bless and anoint us. And let the Holy Spirit flow through us. Anoint what you have given to us. In Christ's name I pray. Forgiveness is an act of your will. It's not a warm and fuzzy feeling. If you wait until you feel that warm and fuzzy feeling and angels harping, you'll meet the mortician before that ever happens. It's not going to happen. In the last moment of his life, Jesus on the cross demonstrated the act of forgiveness that Christians are to follow. His exact words on the cross as he was being crucified by the Romans was, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. In his last breath, he used it to forgive a brutal Roman empire that had harassed him and his family from the day of his birth. They killed him because they feared him. Why did they fear him? They feared him because anyone who can raise someone from the dead, anyone who can heal someone, anyone who can feed a mob of people out of a boy's sack lunch can marshal an army. Many people read the story of Jesus and think of him as the Prince of Peace. Please be assured, Rome crucified him because he was an insurrectionist too dangerous to live. They were afraid of him. Jesus was crucified because he fought a battle for your soul and my soul. And on that cross, he shed his blood and my sins and your sins were forever forgiven forgotten, buried in the deepest sea and never to be remembered against us anymore. In Matthew 18 verse 21, then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall someone sin against me and I have to forgive him? Up to seven times. And he said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven which is an amazing statement. I, uh, I want you to notice that Simon Peter was trying to define forgiveness with a mathematical, as a mathematical equation. What is a number? Probably, I have a sneaky suspicion, because when you read about Simon Peter, he was a character. And probably he had one person in mind and he had already forgiven them six times. I think that's why he, I think that's why he said seven because I think he was ready to write somebody off and be done with them. And, you know, trying to put a mathematical formula on forgiveness. I want to talk to you about the mathematics of forgiveness for a few moments today. One area that we are all, I've, I've seen astoundingly, astonishingly amazing at when it comes to mathematics is we've learned how to keep count when people hurt us. You may not be good at math, but when people hurt you, you can keep up with that stuff in an amazing way. Like 14 years ago on at three o'clock in the afternoon, time, place, date, I remember it. And then you did it again and again and again, four years later, and we can remember and do that math real, real easy. The people who will hurt you the most in life are the people you love the most, you've trusted the most, and you've helped the most. 
And the, the, one of the issues and the questions that all of us struggle with when it comes to forgiveness, and it's what Peter was trying to get to, is what are the boundaries of forgiveness? Are there boundaries to forgiving somebody? Is it some place where you just finally get to say, get out of my life, deleted, you're gone, goodbye. Is, is that biblical to do that? And Jesus absolutely blew their minds when he said, no, not seven times, but seven times 70, which I'm not good at math, but that's 490 times the same thing in one day from the, one, from the same person. Jesus is not suggesting a number. He's giving us a new math formula. He was saying you can never stop forgiving others regardless of how deeply and how often they've hurt us. Peter thought that he was processing or proposing a generous standard seven times. But instead, Jesus ups it exponentially and says, no, not seven times, seven times 70. Here's the point. Point number one on forgiveness and don't forget it. Forgiveness is not about keeping score. It's about losing count. That's the only way you can look at this. What was Jesus really saying? He was saying you cannot start keeping score if you're going to be a forgiving person. It's not about keeping score. It's about losing count. Microsoft Excel spreadsheet changed the accounting world. And... Uh, they do it in columns. You, you have a topic or a client or a person. And then you have the date on one side and you have the name. And then you have the, you have the, the column and you have the amount that they owe you. And I think sometimes what we do is we have an Excel spreadsheet on people in our minds that's ongoing. So much so that I brought one in with me today. And these are just examples so back in 2003, mom and dad didn't go to my ball game, so they got themselves a column. Then we got a column for our friends. You know, it goes way back maybe to high school days or something. Stole your girlfriend. You ought to thank them that they stole your girlfriend. Have you seen her? Look on Facebook. She looks crazy. You are blessed to get the girl you're with. But, but you know... Um, they didn't invite me to the Super Bowl. Yeah, uh, come on now. I noticed on Facebook y'all had a party, but we didn't get invited. So you just got yourself a column. And, and I'm going to keep score. I'm keeping score on our relationship and old co-workers. And you lied about me, took credit for my project, didn't give me the credit. And since Sharice is here, I'm going to throw her under the bus. Treated me ugly. Notice that's gone on there for years. Treated me ugly. Turned me down. <laughs> that, that, that means she, uh, she had a headache and that would be numerous in there. Another one and another one and another one and another one. You gotta, you get, you're in a column. You're in a column. But, but there's other columns and that's the bottom line is I, I, every time somebody does something wrong, I put them in a column and I start adding and adding and adding and adding and adding and you come to church and you're offended and you're angry and you're mad and you try to worship and you try to get something out of it but you can't because you've got columns on people. The thing about Excel spreadsheets is if you keep putting the wrong formula in you will never end up with the right equation. It keeps kicking it back saying you got to go back and fix something in this column because it's messing up the whole equation. And the reason people's equation of their life gets messed up is because they don't deal with those columns and it's going to come back and the equation of your life emotionally, spiritually, physically is taking a toll on you. It's taking a toll on, on you financially. It's taking a toll on you relationally because there's people that you've got columns on and you keep in score and you know what they did and you won't let it go and it's, it's not just affecting them it's eating you alive forgiveness is not keeping score it's losing count that's what forgiveness Jesus is, teaching. is not an act it's a way of life you can't pick and choose whom you're going to forgive 
You can't say, well, I'll forgive you, but you hurt me too much and I'm not getting to you. We are to forgive all of those within our circle, all of those who come across our path. Over the past 50 years of ministry, I've seen the devastation of unforgiveness, how it creates bitterness and how bitterness becomes poison, how it poisons not only the individual, every member of the family, everyone within the circle of friendship, everyone who knows of this poison. I've, I've seen it cripple people, literally, physically cripple people. I saw a man drop dead, literally drop dead in, in an ang, in a fit, a flash of bitterness and unforgiveness. It just overwhelmed him that somebody had reproached him. Somebody had done him harm, and he clenched his fist, and he bent over the desk and died. I've seen the devastation of this kind of thing, this spirit of unforgiveness. But I've also seen and I have experienced the power of forgiveness, how it opens the windows of heaven, opens every closed door. I've seen how it takes a full cup to a full measure, pressed down, shaken, and running over. I've seen it transform lives. I I talked to a a woman this past week, and she was rejoicing, and her testimony was that for all her life, for many, many years since she was a young lady, she had bitterness against her father, who had mistreated her for years, abuse. And she could not. She's uh, uh, in mid-age now, and she said, Pastor, I have lived for years with this bitterness and unforgiveness from my father, though he's dead. And I, I, I couldn't. And he said, she said, it affected everything in my life. There was no joy. There was an emptiness. Everything I tried, nothing worked. My prayers didn't seem to be answered. And she said, I, I lived with this bitterness, and it was mounting. But she said, recently I've been in the Word, and I've been convicted by the Word and what Jesus said and the commandments of the Lord about forgiveness. And she said, I gave that bitterness and that unforgiving spirit over to the Lord. And she said, I can't tell you the joy that's been released in my life. I have a joy. I can't get to my father. He's gone. But I thank God because I have seen the power of the joy of forgiveness. I don't think you can ever walk through. I can decide I'm going to forgive somebody, but I can't walk it out in my life if there's not some things that I realize. First of all, God's not asking me to feel differently about them. He's asking me to pray, to bless and not curse, which if you study that, it means to speak evil, to speak well of. We've got to get you opened up. And Jesus said, ask and you shall receive and keep on asking. Seek and you shall find and keep on seeking. Knock. And it shall be open, but if it doesn't happen, keep on knocking. Know the right spot. That's prayer, God. I'm trying to forgive this person and not kill them. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm knocking. And it may take a minute. It may take a minute. It may take a minute. You got to wait. It's slow. It's not squirting out real fast. It's slow. Come on. But you keep praying about it. Well, well how, how many times do I have to pray for them? Keep on knocking, keep on knocking, keep on knocking, keep on until the contents on the inside of forgiveness begins to be released. Little by little by little by little, God begins to heal and restore our relationship.